a beautiful morning right here at the newsstands and I know you viewers are always enjoying this platform. Talking about Flip TV's by standards at newsstands anchored by your one and only presenter, Michael. I declare special appreciation to the CEO of Flip TV, Abiyadu Kupoluyi, for always keeping it real with the viewers and the reviewers. All right, today's edition of this program, we have uh, some special stories here. And one of the special stories we have here is the death of the former Ghana president. Talking about Rawlings, we have Ghana African leaders mourn as Rawlings dies. Ghana African leaders mourn as Rawlings dies. Ghanaians and African leaders yesterday mourned and extolled the virtues of the former Ghanaian president, Flight uh, Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, who died from suspected COVID-19 complications. On to the next one, we have another story. Banks get risk shy, engage agents. Banks get risk shy, engage agents. Customers to pay more as 10 percenters rule. Customers to pay more as 10 percenters rule. Down the paper, we have all the stories. Wari Woods International Community to Develop Nigerian Youth. Wari Woods International Community to Develop Nigerian Youth. Fashola Falls, 76 billionaire vote for housing. Says Ministry owes 69.9 billion naira. All right, Obaseki sworn in pledges to deepen reform, diversify economy. The New Telegraph with its own stories on insecurity. Boko Haram, 700 ex-military officers amputated, dismissed. 700 ex-military officers amputated, dismissed. U.S. Nigeria move against ISIS terrorists. U.S. Nigeria move against ISIS terrorists. What is six global partnership on insecurity? Defense headquarters. Intel's based operations working. Intel's based operation working. All right, the damn part of the new Telegraph newspaper, we have a story on Southeast 2023. Southeast me dump PDP for APC. 2023. Southeast me dump PDP for APC. Masop. Presidential ticket will earn party our support. On to the next one, which is our reviewers. Let's join them for more analysis on these stories. I'll be right back. You see, death normally is a necessary end to humanity, to mankind. But it's painful because even Jesus Christ that had the power to raise the dead in the case of Lazarus the Bible says he wept that, to, that is to tell you that death is no good because if you go and look at the account of how the Bible describes the death, death you see that it's a place of where people are forgotten it's a place where people are eaten up by warm but that notwithstanding the hope of people is that after death there's eternity and when death happens like this it wakens our consciousness to life after death so by implication i extend my condolence to the government of ghana to the immediate family of runners most especially as a leader they hold a high esteem having did a revolution that transformed that country and again, you see, it's a sober reflection because when things like this happen, it awakens our consciousness to the judgment day. So it is an opportunity to remind people that why you enjoy, why you marry, why you enjoy all the benefit of provision of earth, remember that you, there is a day you are going to render stewardship, give account of your life. Remember that there is a place called um, heaven, there is a place called hellfire. Remember that the life you live here on earth will determine where you spend your eternity. On that basis, I encourage people to turn back to God and repent through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, thank you so much. 
uh, Matthew, it seems the military personnel have really suffered uh, in the hands of this uh, deadly uh, terrorist group called Boko Haram. We have 700 ex-military officers appointed and they have been dismissed. Now, what is the problem? You see, it is unfortunate and it's exposing our weakness as a sovereign state. Because if in the war against insurgency, we are having up to 700 Nigerian military personnel being amputated, and of course they are already incapacitated, they cannot function as uh, military personnel. That is the reason they are being disengaged. But it shows that we don't have what it takes to combat these people. And it shows that we are not doing the needful to acquire the necessary war armament to stand Boko Haram. And again, it doesn't now equally worry you that Nigerian government, Nigerian army is giving amnesty to repentant Boko Haram, whether I call it repentant or otherwise. And at the same time, people who have suffered in the hands of Boko Haram, some of them are, are in ID, IDP camp as we are speaking. Some of them have been hospitalized. Some of them have been um, incapacitated for life. Some of them have died. So is it not injustice to those that have suffered in the hands of Boko Haram by Say you want to de-radicalize Boko Haram members and retrograde them into the society. So we have so many ease in this fight against insurgency that the government is not getting right. For me, I, have, I pity those military personnel who have been um, dismissed, or rather who have their maybe hands or legs amputated as a result of fighting insurgency. I pity them. And again, I think the government, because you see, these are the reasons the military is being demoralized. That is why recently, the other time, you saw what looks like um, the military personnel disobeying their commander. You saw a situation where they were shooting sporadically in protest. Because they are, they are, they are psychologically traumatized. There was a scenario one day where one of them have to shoot and kill a colleague. Because how can you examine a situation where somebody has been subjected to fighting insurgency for two, three, four years, not giving break to go and visit his uh, family, not being given break to go and refresh, not being given break to go and have his system uh, um, renewed. I don't think in other parts of the world, this is not how you use military. The other time, where America had to kill Soleimani, you know that Iranian government fired some missile into American uh, base in Iraq. And at the end of the day, they said almost 100 American soldiers were traumatized by the impact of that missile. Do you know that the American government had to evacuate all those military personnel to a leisure uh, atmosphere to relieve them of all the trauma and make them refreshed? And tells her that they need to bring in fresh persons to resume duty. But in Nigeria, you overstretch these military personnel, and you cannot get the best out of them. And that's why even it's not even limited to uh, the military; it's equally applicable to the police. And it's unfortunate. Look at what happened at um, Aja the other day, where Arabs have to be shooting a billion fan in, in, in broad daylight. And you quite understand that the police have refused to fully resume duty. So these are part of the impact of that refusal to resume duty. And again, everything fall back to government doing the needful. Because look at NSAS protests. Look at the after uh, aftermath effects. Look at the way the government is handling it. Is the government willing to solve it? If you look at the approach of government, you understand that they are not even willing to solve this problem. They've been clamping down on protesters. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because tomorrow, when the police would have gotten up and start their re-operation, you still see them brutalizing Nigerians, maiming Nigerians, killing Nigerians. And again, the presidency do not do any tangible thing to address um, human rights violations, extrajudicial killing. There are so many instances where the presidency have refused to do the natural. Thank you very much. Right. Of course, uh, once you are born, you have a certificate, you are qualified to die any time. 
But for Lawrence, I think he has served his people and will be remembered by the posterity. And of course, uh, the Ghanaians uh, should take solace in the fact that he has served humanity and uh, have improved on the lot of uh, Ghana citizens. So I, I say kudos to Ghana and uh, my heart goes to his immediate family. They should take uh, consolation in the, in the fact that God takes and he gives. Now, what lessons should the Nigerian government learn from Rollins, the past president and the incumbent president? Uh, you mean Nigerian yeah. government learning lessons? Is it? Especially the past presidents and president. Even the governors. Of they course, are not exempted. Uh, not at all. What lesson do you expect them to learn? Taking uh, an instance from the Lake City, you see, have they shown that there are people that can, that are teachable, that can be corrected? They have not shown any sense of remorse. Who is the president himself? This is a man who has a terrorist bloodline. Look at everyone around him that surrounds him. It's either a, a, a religious fanatic, an extremist, or Boko Haram. It has been alleged that you can remember in 2015 when Boko Haram wanted to negotiate with the federal government. They nominated Mr. Buhari or General Buhari as their spokesperson. So there is no way somebody who has a bloodline of terrorists, terrorism, a, a bloodline of jihadists, a revolution or movement, can learn. The only thing is they can learn, they have been uh, abducted and indoctrinated, is to, to waste life, to kill and to destroy. In as much as you don't agree with the position, religious position. So I don't see them learning anything. And mind you, you can see what is happening. We are Boko Haram has become the first citizens. They, there is a movement now, a program to place them on monthly salary. I, I, I overheard that is within the neighborhood of 150,000 per month. And this thing is not going down with the people in the south. Sooner or later, you see the, the militants from the south. They will resume agitation. How could you neglect a region, almost virtually other regions, just concentrating on a particular region? And you call yourself the president of the, the, the uh, over 250 nationalities. It is quite unfortunate. What, 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 what sort of country is this? And the idea of blaming uh, Trump, who has placed American force, who has given his best to make sure that America can become the greatest and remains the greatest who, to improve the laws of the world. I have overheard some Nigerians saying uh, Trump does not care for Africa. Does not care for. Does your president care for you? Even those in diaspora, does Mr. Mike, does your presence care for you? Does Buari know that you are existing? Do they have any data, any any profile concerning you? Concerning, okay, Mr. David that have left the service here, and is there or, or I myself who have served over a, a close to a decade? Do they have any profile concerning? whether I have secured a job or is there any opportunity where I could be called up to take one. This people has no plan for you. So they cannot learn any lesson. Do you expect Buhari to learn lesson? They have been calling for I mean, dismissal of the service chiefs. He surrounded himself with his own kinsmen in, 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 a, in, in a plurality of, 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 of this nature. Ethnicity, we found ourselves as a a different uh, multinational background and you are just being selective your nepotism and uh, of course you, you are not learning lesson and he cannot learn any lesson even the so-called uh, the governors what lesson are they learning oftentimes the 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 the, 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 
they need the shore of Nigerian state to take luxury, to enjoy themselves where the system is working, where infrastructures and the government we are committed to make sure that their people feel better. Look at Singapore. We almost were at a point at the same economic uh, level with Singapore. But they have left us 100 years, 200 years. forward. Okay, you said 200, 200 years. Be, uh, forward, and we are behind 200 years. We can never catch up with Singapore. People, they have no resources. Look at Malaysia. They just came to pick a... Uh, 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 palm, palm nuts, and today they have they have made progress further than I mean, is this Nigeria a cause? Maybe it's likely that no one that Jabez in the scripture has to come up and change his name from Jabez to a better name. You see, Nigerian name is Jabez, personified. Nigerian name is nigger, backwardness, and I think. The demons of backwardness have held Nigerian captive because of that name. They are following Nigeria. Nigerians are good people. Whenever you see them in the world, whether you are Yoruba, Aousa, Fulani, I have mingled with several of them, even if you are, you, are, you are from Yoruba race. You see, we have been able to establish some relationship and uh, of course, squids have strived over the years. That is, I'm from Igbo and you are from Yoruba. We can reason and understand one another. But our fundamental problem, the most terrorist group and we have is our government. Our government has been so callous, has been so insensitive, I mean, trying to divide us across uh, our ethnicity and religious uh, divide. But Nigerians are good people, of course. I believe that one day they will be found, they will not that we find no place to occupy within the Nigerian system. What is important is that people clamoring for Trump, come and help us. Trump does not care for How much does your government care for you? Look at the common palliative, even Lagos State. They hold it and they, most of them got damaged. That runs into several millions instead of getting to the, down to the masses. They hold it until, until, until they were overtaken by event. But the people have to take destiny into their hands. So for me, my advice to... The, the people that even took destiny into their hands were arrested. Of course, the people that decided to take destiny... And some of the were collected. We are, we, are, we are retired from them. You can see the nature of this country. That's why when you see an Igbo man, a Biafran man agitating for Biafra, so people will be making some senseless noise because there is no future for Nigeria. If you believe in Nigeria, Mr. Mike, I mean, there will be no future for this country. You either check out of this country and, I mean, propagate the Oduduwa, uh, right. uh, of course, uh, nation. Thank you so much. Where we can achieve our destiny, where we, one can realize his or her dream without okay. being intimidated or harassed. Thank you, that is what I am expecting. All right, and uh, I want you to just uh, say something to Ghanaians and say something to the Nigerian government. Let's see what they can uh, learn from Rawlings or what they've learned from Rawlings. And let's see how how far we can go from here. Thank you, Mr. Michael. Good morning to our esteemed viewers. I want to begin on this news that Rawlings was an inspiration, was, was a great man, was a great man in Ghana. He brought about change in Ghana. He, this group and that we brought about revolution, killed every past leader, everyone, every leader that ants that was that also had their hands soiled with corruption. He's in Ryan Group spearhead that movement. And then he achieved that. And then ever since that day, Ghana did not remain the same again. He has always been a man. He, he has always been a man that cared for his people. In as much, he got to a time. Ghana is able to come for him to become a lifetime president. He said no. He said, I will do my own tenure as a president and I will step aside. If he had to, if he had to be here in Nigeria, a Nigerian man would want to seize that opportunity to be to be what? A lifetime president. Because because he because he at that time he might have think he had fought for the betterment of the country. Yeah. 
of the country or of citizens. And then you want to seize that opportunity and just just amass well. But he said no. I will just do my own tenor and I will. So now my sincere my heart fell few for every Ghanaian answer and then all the Ghanaians. I pray that God give them the fortitude to bear the loss. And for Nigerian leaders, it's a wake up call that this is a man that everybody, every boat in Nigeria and then and then in diaspora abroad mourns him because he he has was been a good sorry, he has been a what and then uh, what's it called? Epitome of what a good leader. None of a Nigerian leader can die. And then we your world will, will celebrate him the way John Rawlings is being yes, celebrated today, even if about another dies tomorrow. No, no, nobody care. Nobody care because they are, they are all man of what bad influence. All right, on to the next one. We have our Boko Haram issue on the front page of this journal. 700 military, that's ex military officers, amputated, dismissed. Now, my own take is I believe the government should be able to you know, think out of the box and do something tangible for these uh, officers. They've tried, you know, combated uh, insurgency, which at the end of the day, uh, they made their water leak. Now, don't you think the way I'm thinking? That is, it. You, are, you are not far. You are, you are not far from the truth. All what you just said is just simply the truth. You've served your country, and then again, I, due to some some circumstances, you can no longer carry on due to why battle or whatever you lost. You maybe there's there's what there's what deficiency happened. Maybe. Maybe your your hands are being amputated. I don't know how anything uh, anything is to sit down. In a in a same country, government should have what a database of those who could no longer carry on with service. I was speaking to one of my one of my uncle yesterday. He, he retired from Lagos State as a principal. He retired four years ago. Up till now, he has still not collected his pension. Four years. He has been going to Alausa every day, every day. He even called me yesterday. I gave him 500 naira for him to just board bus. That's what I got. A level 14 civil servants. Level 14. If, if, if you know the hierarchy of civil service, you know level 13 has to do with is like equivalent to a palm sec. Still, he still, had, I, he still begged me 500 naira yesterday for him to just go to Alausa and, and just file his what all the all, all these pension, pension stuffs up to now, four years. And we have uh, ex governors, deputy governors receiving their pension. He has not been paid his pension, and you have people that served, that just, that just occupy public office in just less than four years, and they are early. And their take home every year is, is what? Unnegotiated table. 60 million, 40 million at their pension. And you have people that have served the same public service for good 35 years. That have that have that have what impacted in in the people's life and and they are and they are begging so for them suffering for just how much is that pension? How, how, how much does this? How much do they want to pay him? Just 30 million for 35 years that he has served the government. So I think back to our back to our topic. I think government should have a data for those who who for those who are what he was who have who can no longer carry on with the service, but still on still. And then again, and then again, there have been budgets, budgets, budgets are there, are there for them. But why as governments, why are they so only call it that? Uh, uh, why have they not utilized the money for them? Why do they want them to suffer? It has always been, this has always been the same, it has always been the same occurrence. Every year, you see, I mean, man, uh, uh, if you cannot carry on with it, with the job, government can no longer look inward to them. Government can no longer, government can no longer cater for the abuse, and they're forgotten that these persons, these persons, got injured while in service, while fighting, while defending the country. These are people that are supposed to be 
to be placed on what? On priority. You treat them well, but still, you neglect them. So that is why you see most servicemen, most force men, police, army, navy, they don't give it their best. Why? While in service, because they, because they know that. See, after, after, if if there is some, if, if because they know that. See, if there is what unforeseen circumstances, government will not. Take care for them. All right. Thank you so much, David. You know, uh, it's a pity and for a such man because the history I hear about the man, he fight for Ghana. You understand? And he's one of the most democratic people that make Ghana to be great. You, know, you see a, a nation that a, they are, the former president died, the people mourn. Not like Nigeria, because I never see a former president that will die in this country, that the whole Nigeria will begin to cry and weep. Say we lost someone. I never see because all of them they have nothing to write home more for us. Because when you talk about the legacy Ghana is, is facing is following today, is from that man. You understand? They fight for the good of Ghana. And that is why the Ghana is not greater than Nigeria. You understand? Ghana is above Nigeria because those are the people that beg from us. We we hear you that we supply the light, we supply the many things. But now Ghana have 24 hours. Power supply. supply. For Nigeria, uh, because of the wicked people we have, we can never boast of 10, 10 hours. They will bring light 10 hours without taking it. We cannot boast of it. And you are calling that yeah, it's a pity for the man to die at this stage that Africa need him more. We need people like that that will enlighten the fake leader we have. Because many of African leaders are fake. Especially in Nigeria, they are fake. They don't have anything to write them about. They don't have anything to that people will have as a value that we proud to have a leader. And we are saying that we have, there is nothing like a leader in Africa. You understand? These are the kind of people, because what you see yesterday, the Ghana president, the president one, put the seven day of, of money for the, for the former president that died. Because you know that people love him. You understand? People love him. But Ghana, from the time of Obama and George, this Buhari, what does our government do for us? That if they die now, we we'll be, we'll begin to mourn and they'll tell us that we should go and stay at home and mourn our former president. It can't happen because nobody will, nobody will answer to that such call. But in Ghana, they will answer to it because they love their president. Okay. You understand? That is what I have to say there. But right. well, that is uh, how the JTF Nigeria government said that they want to recruit the, the JTF into Nigeria Army. It's a wrong decision. They now know that they have agenda. After recruiting repentant Boko Haram to the Nigeria army, and now we don't know the real army again. You understand? We don't know the real army in Nigeria. Because the few people we have there, are the, they call the repentant Boko Haram. And now, they are tagging Nigeria youth as a terrorist. If terrorists come, eh, he better than me, I only tell them that I don't want you to have my faith. They say Nigeria youth are terrorists. He is only terrorist that Nigeria they take from their work. Because Boko Haram will be killing people since 2011. And now, the government are calling the repentant Boko Haram and recruited them into army. And now they want to call it a vigilante group formed by the by the northern elders to recruit them into army. Then who do you think that those JTF will fight for? They will fight for the interests of the north. And still, we have fake people from the south and west that are there in that uh, Arthur Rock, cannot speak. Look at the middle bed. They stand against it. Because they know that the target of those people is is very horrible. If something start now, nobody can withstand it. You will be afraid that something start here, they bring army. You don't know who the real army are. You don't know the the repentant Boko Haram. You don't know the JTF. So, but Mr. Mike, Nigeria is a love. We have to wake up. And not everything that this fake government brings for us, we we accept it. You understand? We have to make some demand so that the country, will, if the country no move forward, let it divide. Everybody find their way. You understand, Naba? Um, Rollins. Rollins, J. Rollins. Rollins. J. J. Rollins of Rollins. Ghana. He started his uh, political journey in the 1980s. When J. Rollins, I believe, I suppose I'm saying the truth, was jailed. In the jail there, he staged coup. The coup was staged in his favor. When he took over after the coup, that was staged in his favor. He did what? He killed all the dangerous, greedy politicians leaders. in Ghana. Leaders. 
That was how Ghanaian society was cleansed, sanitized till today. Nothing like corruption again in Ghana. He eventually killed all of them. He did not spare anybody. Can't you have someone like that in Nigeria? Which was why General said, Nigerians are not ready yet to be great again. If they are ready to be great again, they should do what I did. That's a great statement that will be remembered. He will be remembered for many years and we have over such, such remarks. Such kind statement. Of creature in yes. Nigeria. In Nigeria, I don't think we have somebody like that, you know. Somebody like that, no, 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 no. We have somebody like Awolowo, we know. If Awolowo was there, I was so it, Nigeria would not be like this. Awolowo would have restructured Nigeria, you know. Everybody know Awolowo as a man that trusts in, you know, regionalism. He likes regionalism. Let everybody control every region, control their own resources. Then, Ojuku or Ajuku, Ajuku as as house has called him. Ajuku is a nice man too, but the opportunity, you know, was not given to him. Then Agui Ronsi himself was just like uh, Baba Awolowo. Agui Ronsi was, you know, campaigning for journalism until he was toppled. Then uh, Chuku Makaduna Nzogu and the Mama Hassan Kastina, you know, two of them and uh, the rest, Adem Ororego, I think, all those guys in the southwest that joined the coup, they were good guys, they mean revolution. People like that would have brought Nigeria to that level of Ghana by killing all our political profiteers all our corrupt politicians, they would have made, 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 made sure they stamped all of them out. Now, who can kill all of them. The Messiah of Nigeria now should be from the youth. Wow. Yes, among the youth lies the Messiah of Nigeria. The youth that were killed during the Yes, yes, some of the youth that were killed during the protest, many, good number of them some are of, still alive. Some of the youth they were not given chance. That we are not. They were and, not given the chance. And, and you expect them to come. Yes, out. we are going to come and out very same, soon. Same team, Rollins. King Silmaralu is coming. King Silmaralu is mobilizing his own platform. Do you understand? To come out again, 2023. He's a youth party. People like him. I like him. People love him. You know. I like him. I believe you like him too. Yeah, well, so King Silmaralu, right? youth are going to back him up. Chowere is a youth. If he comes out with good incentives, people will join him. We don't want somebody that will just come with greed or mix it up with any other, you know, with feelings that might not be bought, you know, uh, be bought by the youth. We want somebody that will be general. Do you understand? In consideration, considering the youth, considering everybody. We don't want somebody that will be sectionalizing or maybe you are working for uh, Buhari or a common position. Chore is no longer trusted by the youth. I'm telling you the truth. We cannot just dance to his costume. No. He was there when Obasanjo was there. Fighting Obasanjo was there when Jonathan was there. Fighting Jonathan was there when uh, Yaradua was there. Fighting, do you understand? Now, all the fought, all the fight he fought was in favor of the opposition party, APC, Buhari, and Co. Now he has come to fight against Buhari, and he knew, he knew how he was punished. So let me tell you, the Messiah should be from the youth, Michael. I'm telling you the truth. You and I could change Nigeria. It's not the old men. The old politicians, they are tired. They are not coming out with something good for the for the entire citizen. So we need a revolution. Yes, a we need a revolution, a total revolution. Somebody that can do what Rollins did. It's what we need. That Rollins, you see, JJ Rollins, Ghanaians are celebrating him now. He's a, he's a death that won what so many. Celebration. Celebration, what I'm celebration. telling you. The man what that changed and sanitized a, a Ghanaian political, uh, you know, the uh, Ghanaian polity. Ghanaian society. Sorry, it was celebrating, not celebration. Sorry, yes, it was it, celebrating. It was celebrating. Yes, it was celebrating. I'm telling you, did that because it's the man who made them who they are today. Without Jerry Lawrence, who is it? Kwame Krumah, after Krumah, other ones that like throwing party on the street, carrying women. Do you understand? Until this man came in, he finished them. He removed all of them. So somebody that will change Nigerian society and be our Messiah is someone who is gonna do exactly what. Jerry Rollins, JJ Rollins of Ghana did in 90s, I think, or 80s, when he totally, virtually killed all the greedy politicians in Ghana. And that is why Ghana is more or less like Spain, Switzerland, other European countries, many of them cannot even hold their economy with that of Ghana. It is because of JJ Rollins. Kudos to the, to the, to the, to the old man, anyway, you know, he's, he's 
back and get I, him. We learned he died of COVID-19. Oh, Jesus Christ. May he so rest in peace. We wish him well in the eternity. Right. Thank you so much, Raphael. Very brilliant, Raphael. At this junction, we say goodbye to you on today's edition of this program. We really appreciate you for keeping in touch with us. Kudos to our reviewers for analyzing what we have on the front page of the new Telegraph Super. Join us next time on the same platform. My name is Michael Adepoli. Behind the camera, I have Femi Davis, Odusi, Dio, and Festus Oluabukumi. You can join me on Facebook, Michael Temtayo Adepoli, M I C H A E L, Michael Temtayo Adepoli. On Instagram, I do play Michael Tim Tayo. You can subscribe to our sister channel, 50 Plus. Bye, everyone.